Hi, I'm not going to lie to you. This is going to be kind of an emotional video for me. Um, it's kind of a summary of my life, all the different situations and illnesses that have come into it, what I've learned about it, how it's progressed, and people need to become aware of this because it's something that's actually becoming so toxic that the world needs to know and more intelligence about this heavy metal gadolidium needs to be researched and found so that we can replace it with something that's safe for the public to use whenever they get a contrast with a CAT scan, MRI, or any other machine. It, um, the MRIs are used with these contrasts because this heavy metal is something that can react to the magnets in the machines. And so it's necessary in some ways, but I don't understand why, since the scientific community has known that this gadolinium is retained in our bodies, why they have not found something to replace it with something that is safe. And there have been many studies on this so I know that they've known for a long time. You can do your own research if you want to find dates. There are publications published out there. Um, there are many researchers working on this, but it's been a, a huge amount of time that they've known this, and people are getting poisoned by the hundreds every single day, and it's just unnecessary. Um, I. Let's see, it all started with me when I had some breast biopsies that I needed when I had lumps in my breasts. I started at 21. They wanted to do an MRI with contrast each time, and each time they removed it, and I got the results, and it was benign. I've had a total of 19 breast biopsies, and 19 were benign. Okay, so that's 19 contrasts that were not unnecessary. They just weren't needed. Okay, then we fast forward to when I was um, gestational, diabetic, uh, with my second child, and I did not know that my test came back as a false negative. So that means that I was gestational with diabetes but the test did not show it. So I was never treated with insulin. Therefore, I was sick the whole time when I was pregnant. Um, my insulin was not handling what it should have. And the day my son was born, three weeks early, at 11 pounds, three ounces, I developed MS and fibromyalgia that day. And I know that it was that day because I have doctors that attest to how my symptoms changed over a 24 hour period. I became um, someone who could not sleep. Insomnia still plagues me to this day. Um, the pain was incredible. I had had a baby before. I knew how I was supposed to feel. I knew what a C-section was like. Um, it was totally different the second time. And the MS and the fibro are still with me, of course. Then, um, six years ago, I developed breast cancer. So that was not a biopsy, that was um, instinct. I went for my annual mammograms I had annual ultrasounds because of my very dense breasts, and I was told, it's all clear, you can go home, we'll see you next year. And I, my gut said, no, stop, turn around, tell them you need something else, some other test. And I asked, and they said, well, that would have to be a contrast MRI then. And there was the cancer. Within a couple hours, I was diagnosed. So it's been six years, and I've gotten through all of those things. Um, 
I did have radiation. My cancer was found early. I think it was due to my MS medication being changed 10 months previous to that. So I turned down the chemotherapy. I turned down the being followed for five to 10 years with hormone blockers because I had developed so many allergies after breast cancer that I really thought, I don't need all this toxic stuff in my body. I did not know at that time that my instincts were telling me all of these toxins, all of these metals, all of these big pharma medications are made from petroleum-based products. They are not natural. They will cause cancer at some point. So four years after being diagnosed, I started looking into some information and I found my gadolinium poisoning group that I'm in now that has unveiled countless truths to me that I have researched and found that they were telling me the truth. The research I was seeing was my life. So um, I mentioned that I've developed all kinds of allergies. I've had allergies, hay fever, minor things like that through my life. Um, but I have allergies now that are off the charts. I, um, I have inflammation that's off the charts. I can't get rid of any of it. Um, I've tried. Um, I have not tried detoxing the gadolinium because it's, I'm so far out. Um, it's just not going to do much good. I've had 45 contrast MRIs. That's to follow my MS and my breast cancer. And throughout the years when they found all the lumps, they were biopsying. Um, so I'm allergic to toxins in the environment. I'm allergic to chemicals. Um, I've changed my food, um, eliminated gluten, eliminated so many different things. There's PEG, that's a big issue. That's a pharmaceutical discovery or development or invention that um, they use in everything. Every cleaning products, shampoo, deodorant, everything you have in your house probably has PEG in it or its sister, PPG. It's toxic. It um, can cause cancer. It's hormone disruptive, and it's it's sick that it's even in this product. It's in multivitamins. It's in prenatal vitamins. Big Pharma is not out there to save you. It's not out there to make you healthy. It's out there to sell you stuff. I don't say that lightly. I don't like that I've been put in this position. But I do like that my God gave me a mind and he put my head on the top of my shoulder so that I would use my brain and help others. I have advocated for my whole life for different things for people. Now I'm advocating for something that has affected me that I want to keep you from experiencing. I hope you listen to these stories. I hope they change you. I hope they move you. And above all, I hope they warn you to say no to contrast. Say no to gadolinium. Don't let this poison ruin your life. It affects the pain in your bones, your muscles. Um, I, I was told by the group that I probably developed MS and fibro because of gadolinium. That's so sick. Please, God bless you all. Do your research and just say no. Thank you. If you or a loved one have been harmed by gadolinium, first, I'm so sorry. But second of all, email mrigadoliniumdisease at gmail.com. Your email will go to Dr. Regina Sutton, who is currently looking for people's information so that she can get us approved with an actual medical diagnosis, which could potentially help a lot of people. Also, you can report your case to the FDA. We need 
the power in numbers to show that this is happening to people everywhere. And lastly, you can join our Facebook groups or social media. If you have not been harmed by GAD, consider yourself lucky and run the other way. I'm just kidding. We actually need your help. So there's a drug that can potentially chelate gadolinium, but believe it or not, it's not publicly available. Weird how that works, isn't it? The antidote is not available. Another thing is we really want to see gadolinium deposition disease on consent forms. As of right now, people are not told that there is an issue with taking gadolinium unless they have kidney disease, and that is just outright wrong. So call up your local congressperson and tell them, hey look, I've noticed some of my friends have been getting poisoned. Is there anything we can do about that? And mention these two things to them. We need funding for HOPO, the drug that can potentially chelate gadolinium, and we need informed consent because it's not really enough to just put it in small print on a medication guide that no patient receives. It's not enough to do that. Who's going to be able to see it if you're not giving them the medication guides? We need GDD put on consent forms. When people sign for MRIs, tell them what is possible. Thank you for watching and come back again.